Hello and welcome to Communicore Weekly. I'm George from Imagine Earning. And I'm Jeff from Mice Chat. We hope you enjoyed last week's show. Let's just jump right into this week's. It's time for Disney History! Rolly Crump has always been my favorite Imagineer, ever since I was old enough to realize just what an Imagineer was. He has a very distinct style that when you look at, you just know it's his artwork. I've always gravitated towards his work, and it should really come as no surprise that all the things he's worked on have been my favorite attractions. Born on February 27, 1930 in California, Rolly had art running through his veins since day one. He always said that using his imagination to help his style run wild, and you can clearly see it in his work. He joined the Walt Disney Studios in 1952, where he served as an in-between artist and later assistant animator on various classic Disney films such as Peter Pan and Lady and the Tramp. The studio offered a wealth of opportunity to him because of their open-door policy, and it essentially was a schooling. Rolly was fascinated with propellers and showed them off in an art show in the studio library. Walt saw them and was intrigued, so he moved Rolly to WED in 1959. The little propellers became the inspiration for the Tower of the Four Winds, which he designed for the 1964 World's Fair. While at WED, he became one of Walt's key designers for some of Disneyland's groundbreaking new attractions and shops, including the Haunted Mansion, the Enchanted Tiki Room, It's a Small World, and the Adventureland Bazaar. He continued working on and off for Disney for over 40 years, and also worked on other non-Disney projects such as Bush Gardens in Florida and California, the ABC Wildlife Preserve in Maryland, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus World in Florida, the Cousteau Ocean Center in Virginia, and much, much more. Rolly has received both a Disney Legends Award and a window on Main Street USA in Disneyland after he retired from the Walt Disney Company in 1996. He's a nerd, he's a geek, but we all like to hear him speak. So listen up to the words from his beat. It's George's Book of the Week. Pirates of the Caribbean, From the Magic Kingdom to the Movies by Jason Sorrell, was released in 2005, a short two years after the blockbuster film. Imagineer Jason Sorrell writes the definitive history of the classic theme park attraction. He starts off with the history of the pirates and how it developed, from a thieves' market to a basement walkthrough until, after the World's Fair, the attraction that we know today. There is an amazing amount of concept artwork, including plans for how the walkthrough would have taken shape. The bulk of the book is taken up with describing the rides in all four of the Magic Kingdom-style parks, scene by scene. Jason recounts how each version, from Disneyland, the Magic Kingdom, Tokyo Disneyland, and Disneyland Paris, have evolved. When Jason breaks down each scene, he also shares background info and parts from a never-used script. The last part of the book is about the development and creation of the first Pirates film. It is a story that was over 10 years in the making and almost as dramatic of a story as the film. Fans of the attractions or the films are going to love this book. There are a lot of details and it's something that you will reach for again and again. Did you know... Interesting fact. Before Johnny Depp was cast in the role of Captain Jack Sparrow, it originally was going to Eddie Murphy. Here's another minute that you can't get back. It's the 60 Second Review. The new interactive queue at the Haunted Mansion has divided fans since the Imagineers first started talking about putting it in, but I really enjoy it. They have all those really cool Imagineer tributes, the new ones they put in, they have um, Museum of the Weird references, and, you know, it could be a lot worse. Yeah, you know, it could be a lot worse, and I'm sort of divided about it because I like the interactive queue that they've given you something to do while you're waiting in line, and like you mentioned, some of those tributes to the Imagineers are fantastic. What I don't like about it is it seems really silly on the outside, whereas we all know the mansion is sort of spooky on the inside. You know, once you get to the graveyard scene, there's a little silliness there, but I just, I'm just i wondering a little bit if it gives the wrong impression to people when they're walking up, which might be good. Well, part of the good news is is that you can skip it entirely if you don't want to see all that silly stuff and skip straight to the spooky stuff. So if you don't like it, avoid it. That's fine. 
But it doesn't mean you should avoid it. I think you should experience it once, you know, make up your own mind about it because there are a lot of fantastic hidden details. And, you know, I'm not sure if I really am all that against it as much as I am all that for it. But, you know, it gives you a different opportunity to try something. Fantastically fuzzy photo I'm a song spot Fantastically fuzzy photo When I took the shot Fantastically fuzzy photo And this is all I got This week's Fantastically Fuzzy Photo comes from Brian Martsoff and you can find him at bigbrian-nc.com. Don't forget to send us your entries to the Fantastically Fuzzy Photo Contest at communicorweekly at gmail.com. Sometimes you might see it, sometimes you don't. Hey, look, what's that? It's a five-legged goat. When Mary Blair started working on It's a Small World for the 1964 World's Fair, she immediately started doing collage paintings of what the different parts of Small World would look like. Some of her sketches showed what she thought the toys in the ride would look like. Rolly Crump was assigned to design and build the toys based on her drawings. Since Rolly was a huge fan of Mary's work, it was a dream come true for him to work for her, and as a kind of tribute to her, he slipped one toy doll with short blonde hair and wearing Mary's favorite outfit in the attraction as a tribute to her. When they moved the ride over to Disneyland when the World's Fair was over, Rolly was in charge of its installation and he kept it in there still. You can still see it today when you visit Disneyland hanging out in the Eiffel Tower, and also in Walt Disney World in the same place. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, leave a comment. Email us. Or like us on Facebook. You can always follow us on Twitter. And again, you can still enter our fantastically fuzzy photo contest by emailing us at communicorweekly at gmail.com. I'm George from Imagine Nerding. And I'm Jeff from Mice Chat. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Communicore Weekly. Communicore Weekly.